Well, farming anyway is a way of life. It's not a job, it's a way of life. If you're going to be a farmer, that's how you have to look at it. Um, and organics, definitely. It, you have to, I, from my personal point of view, is you have to work with nature. Of course, within organic farming, there's a whole spectrum. You're getting some organic farmers who just see that not using chemicals is the, is the answer, but they're still using the industrial model of inputs and outputs in their, in their head. And then you get um, the organic farmer who realizes that um, it's more complicated than that and that you have, where do you get that f fertility, that you have to start seeing the farm as a whole and there has to be a balance there. And that is one of the main principles of a biodynamic farm, that behind this concept you have that it, it has to be not bringing in inputs from outside, that you see that the whole farm is a kind of whole which has to be in balance, that you have to be able to produce all the feed for your animals off that farm, that they in turn will, if you have the right balance of animals, will produce enough manures of different sorts to maintain and, and increase the fertility on the farm. And the important for in biodynamics is to have the farm as an organism, so, so the farm is able to produce all its own manure and it's able to produce its own fertility. Uh, you have a cycle of uh, fertility on your farm. You don't have to go somewhere and get the fertility from somewhere. You have it on your farm and you run your farm in a way that um, you have enough fertility for your crops. But again, um, and this is a much more ecological approach, but again, the quality and the source of these manures is not taken into account. So where does the manure that feeds this land, it's, it's less important for an organic farmer, while when we look at it from biodynamic point of view, the importance is, is really the quality of, of the manure. Where does this manure come from? What people do here, uh, which is much more efficient, of course, is then to use the clover to feed it to your ruminants, to your cattle, to your sheep, you know, to your cows. Um, and they, in return, give you manure and you, you, you put that uh, onto, the, onto the ground. The, un the unique conditions around the farm are what's important. And, and only after the cow is eating the grass that is grown on this farm, this grass has got the unique qualities that are that is able to produce the manure from the cow that is good for this land and so we're creating a cycle of health a constantly increasing the health of the farm it's very important that we all try and go as organic as possible for the health of everyone and i think to try and reduce the amount of chemicals that we're using because firstly if it's, the food is not organic, you're eating a lot of chemicals anyway, and then there's lots of chemicals used to grow that food. So if you can go organic, then it would reduce the damage to the environment that these chemical GMO crops cause. And then uh, on top of that, in uh, biodynamic farming, there is uh, the concept of the preparations, which, which are, I think, enhancing the manure to a way that the manure is able to really support the plant life uh, uh, for it to support the animals and the people that live on the farm and feed off the farm. So again you're creating this cycle of health and sustainability by having the cows eating grass that is suitable for them, that is healthy, that uh, is, is being fed according to, to the landscape, according to what uh, the, the, the soil underground is needed um, and so the cows are eating and producing the right quality of manure to feed the soil even more and then this manure also goes into the vegetable garden this manure also goes into producing grain and cereals which then is fed the people through through the farm shop if you grow up with organic food it's a very whole environment that you grow up in so everything is affecting that food and I think that makes you very aware of your environment and what you're bringing in and what you're putting out. So I think to learn to grow organically is um, vital for how you treat the earth, actually, and 
I think if you experience the goodness that the organics brings in to your food and to your environment, then you start to see what else needs to be done around you. So yeah, I think it opens your eyes. Our cows are all kept biodynamically, which means that um, you know they're fed with um, hay and silage from our own farm. All, all of their food comes from our own farm, and it's all grown organically, and we use biodynamic preparations. Um, the cows have their horns, which we feel is very important for their digestive systems, which um, is also reflected in the milk, and the milk is more nutritious. Um, and uh, they get to um, be outside all through ye the year, um, and in the summer months, spring, summer, autumn, they're, they're out on grass, eating grass, um, which is the most natural way for a cow. And you can really taste in the milk that it is... Um, sort of fresher, more nutritious than um, uh, a lot of milk which is you know, blended from many different farms and which isn't organic. I think the future is definitely for people to see uh, not just organic or uh, production, but uh, small scale, small scale production which is much more manageable for people and is able to employ more people and empower more people as to where their food comes from and uh, to have healthy food and have a stronger connection with their food because uh, with industrial farming we have lost connection with the source of our food and the quality of our food. It's just, I go to the supermarket and I buy pepper, doesn't matter, one person can go to the and buy pepper, doesn't matter what time of the year. In England you can buy any fruit you want, doesn't matter what time of the year because we are able to import fruit and vegetables from all over the world and we don't think about where our food comes from and how much effort goes into it. But in this farm here, it's a small farm, 200 acre farm, um, you know, we have the people who, who are fed from this farm, the people who are in touch with this farm, get much more in touch with their food. Yeah, I eat mainly vegetarian, some fish, and I tend to buy from local farmers markets only. I hardly ever enter a supermarket anymore, if I can avoid it, um, and eat mainly organic food. Mainly vegetarian. Uh, <laughs> I was vegetarian completely for, it was only two years, um, but I will eat the meat from this farm or from our sister farm, Tablehurst, because it's biodynamic. I know the people looking after the animals and I know what food they're eating and they're um, their environment that they've grown up in. So as long as I know that, I'm happy to eat the meat. I buy a dynamic meat, but I don't really have any need for meat now, so I stay vegetarian. I, I was vegetarian as a child. The whole family was vegetarian, um, but I, I only eat organic meat, really, or biodynamic. We eat really often about macrobiotic food or also vegetarian, and a bit we follow some biodynamic uh, uh, about the grains of the week, like to eat uh, every day. Is, you know, there is each day is good for one grain, like Monday is good for rice, and uh, Tuesday is good for barley, and yeah, sometimes we used to follow the things, and yeah, it was more difficult when, when uh, I was in maybe that we we've been to my grandparents, and uh, they used to cook meat, and it was more difficult. But yeah, most of the time we eat vegetarian food and organic as well. There are methods which are available, which can show that we're not just talking about minerals and pure substance, but there are forces in our food and working in nature. And one of those methods was developed by Pfeiffer when he developed the chromatography. And, uh, and Dr. Kalisko as well with the crystallization method. And uh, by using that method, you can see other than just the chemical constituents of something, but it actually shows completely different picture depending on how alive or dead it is, if there are forces in that or not. And, uh, and these pictures are quite objective and, and, and it's absolutely clear. You can take a dead soil 
and take a sample from that and one which has been enlivened of that same soil with compost and, and biodynamic methods and it creates a completely different picture or juice from a conventionally grown carrot and a biodynamic carrot and again if you don't know how to read it you you might not be able to read exactly what it's saying but but the difference is obvious to anybody Each farm is a, a small community of friends and not only colleagues. In this farm here we have 20, maybe 20 people are employed. The farm is financially viable. Um, we grow uh, uh, the milk, we, we have um, cows for milk and we make our own cheese and yogurt and vegetables and cereals and wheat and meat and eggs and it's just it enhances not just uh, our life, not just the life of the people around here because they can eat it, they can walk around the farm, and also, but also the people who live here. Um, and it all brings a, a positive uh, result to, to, to how our food is grown and how our food is consumed. I think my main reason for being interested in organic agriculture and what the farm does here is um, to do with the fact that you can involve the community in it and also when you work with biodynamic agriculture or organic agriculture, you're actually producing food that people can trust. Um, and we make the farm a completely open enterprise so anybody can engage, they can see how we do things. Um, and therefore, if they like us and can trust us, I think they can also feel the same about the food. They don't have to worry that it has insecticides, that it's GMO, or there's anything um, about it that is sort of um, unhealthy, it's been produced in a good way um, and so that's one of my main reasons for being connected with um, Tablehurst Farm and the organic biodynamic agriculture here. Yeah, I personally don't believe or uh, believe in GMOs because of the health benefits of well for people and for the for the planet as a whole. I don't think the that gene splicing is is an advantage. I haven't seen proof of it getting better yields. The only potential downsides, I think, and this, which is why I avoid it, is that it'll have an effect on us, probably our fertility, and who knows what else, at, at for humans, really. The the risk of uh, cross contamination, not only from one plant to the other, but from one plant to bacteria, to other organisms, and so on, and so on. It's, uh, you don't know what you're unleashing. You have no idea, but what one thing is absolutely sure, whatever you do, it's completely irreversible. You will never be able to stop it again. Once it's out there, it will be out there. If it's working out in a bad way, there's no way to reverse this process. GMO food, I think, is a limiting food source. Uh, it limits your diet, it limits the variety you can eat and it makes you very dependent on the seed companies that produce this GMO seed. Uh, you can't save the seed, you can't grow next year from the same seed, so for me that raises questions about how good it is for you if, it, if it's not fertile enough to produce its own seed that is viable than to eat food like that. I don't know how good that is for your body. GMO uh, Roundup Soya, Roundup Ready Soya, it's also got a terminator gene in it, which means that the, 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 the plant is not able to produce seeds for the next generation. How does that affect, so on a, on a material level, on a nutrient level, maybe there is nothing there. It's the same as organic or biodynamic soya. But uh, for me, from a quality point of view, I ask the question, how does it affect my, my own fertility if I'm eating food that is not able to carry its offspring, is not able to produce uh, the next generation. It's, got, it's not just only 
not able to. It's got a gene that that is a terminator that kills it. So I don't know if there's any research to see that there's fertility problem gone up since people started using uh, eating GMOs. But for me, something rings true. I'm very suspicious of GMOs. Um, I have to say, I always try to buy from local farms when I don't get my food from my own farm. Um, and then I know I can trust the food. I know that I can talk to the farmers and see how it was made um, and you know understand the attitude of the people who made it. So that's really important to me, um, GMOs. Um, have clearly, you know, they've, it, historically they've been associated with using pesticides, they've been associated with, um, uh, you know, infertility of seeds um, and things like that, um, and exploitation of farmers. So, um, personally, I steer clear of them as much as I can. But um, also um, in the UK, as well as in a lot of countries, sometimes, unless you are buying organic, it's impossible to know because they don't label that something has got GMOs in it, so um, that makes it very hard to always be certain. The corn, and it's grown a good crop one year, it doesn't mean that it will grow food every year, good crop every year, and uh, you know, a lot of GMO crops have proved to fail. They don't have higher yields, but they input, in, and they still need to uh, have higher inputs on fertility, on, on fertilizers, on uh, pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides. And the result of it is then you get resistant strains like the super weeds, like uh, and and this just becomes a um, it just becomes an accelerating process. So if you get super weeds, then you need to use more poisons and more poisons, and then you need the weeds get stronger and stronger, and you're not really solving the problem. The problem is not really solved. While if you create a balanced ecological system and acknowledge the fact that there will be weeds, that there will be pests, that there will be diseases. at all have the slightest interest in going back to growing your own food or um, buying from local growers you should try and do it because um, to me that is the future basically um, when you live in a city and you live just with technology all around you where life is so very so fast-paced you actually gradually completely lose your identity and you completely lose a sense of what life really is about. So for me, the journey of returning back to nature and to working with the soil and with plants every day has just been an amazing journey. Like I have had so many moments in the last year or a year and a half where I felt so content and so connected and where I've really been able to feel joy um, just being with color with yeah sounds of nature there's so much more than just nutrition that you get from living on the land and working with the land every day so if you have a chance then i would say try and leave that bubble where you're completely blinded and numbed <laughs> by technology and just try and go back to nature wherever you can find it really it's, I think it's the, it's the only way forward. Small scale uh, growing, a lot of small farms that are able to grow and specialize in certain things, and but grow also a wide variety of fruit and vegetables. It's also fun, you know. It is. <laughs> I wouldn't choose it if it wasn't. I really enjoy farming life. I like. It's very seasonal. It's very rhythmic. Um, you always have the most amazing food right at your fingertips so I would definitely recommend everyone get into farming but it is really hard work um, and obviously if you're doing farming then 
do organic farming because it's so much more rewarding. So if you are a young person living in a city and you have a desire to find out what it's all about, you just need to go onto websites like um, the Woof websites or HelpX or there are so many resources on the internet now that can allow you to go and stay on organic farms in your own country even, you don't have to travel around the world but that you can go and stay at places like that um, and get an experience volunteering for a few months um, or even for a few weeks um, that would be a, a great thing to do or alternatively try and find in your own city if there are allotments available, community projects, community allotments, uh, like here in the UK we have quite a lot of those projects and even while I was still working in an office I used to go and volunteer on Sunday afternoons. Try and find some of these projects and help the, allow these projects to help you spark something for you to change your lifestyle and really understand what organics is about just by yeah, by eating organically and working with the land. Okay.